I think this talk was, was an awesome introduction to the next one. So I think we should move directly now to Matteo Bianchi, who will present work done also jointly with Antonio Bicchi. So Matteo has done a lot of work on synergies, on modeling them, but also on proving to us uh, that they can be turned into something very useful for robotics and what is most useful is, of course, to have a robotic hand, so actual hardware that puts these synergies into reality. So uh, in that sense, uh, I think this was the best example of the, of the application of this concept, um, and I will leave you the floor. So thank you very much, Ode, for the nice introduction, and it's a, mm -hmm. uh, really a pleasure <clears throat> for me to, to have the opportunity to speak in this uh, workshop uh, with many interesting talks. So uh, in my presentation, <clears throat> I will cover some aspects that uh, Oliver already uh, touched in his talk because uh, uh, I will discuss about uh, the human inspiration. Indeed, uh, uh, humans are able to perform a very complex uh, grasping task by exploiting the environment uh, which is extremely useful to enhance the manipulation skills, but also to overcome uncertainties while grasping objects. And all this is possible uh, relying on the body compliance. Indeed, uh, uh, in recent years, uh, there has been a new trend moving from uh, manipulation and grasping humans to soft robotic grasping and manipulation. And uh, we can observe that uh, there have been uh, many new uh, artificial hands that have been developed. They have different concepts and architecture, but they share the same idea of uh, um, having some embodied capability uh, to comply and adapt to the features of the environment. And uh, we can <clears throat> consider two main types of these uh, soft robotic hands. Uh, continuum soft hands, uh, as the hand uh, uh, showed before in, in Oliver's talk, where, uh, the, where we can find the hands made of continuously deformable materials and articulated soft hands, which are hands with a rigid structure but uh, highly deformable joints, so they can adapt to the environment. And thanks to uh, the compliance of these hands, uh, thanks to the intrinsic adaptability of this uh, artificial hand effector, uh, we can rely on a rough approximation of the object properties and the hand pose definition to generate successful grasp and then let the environment and the compliance of the hand to do the rest. And thanks to these uh, capabilities, uh, uh, soft hands uh, have emerged as a, a very good tool for many applications in teleoperation, advanced human-robot interaction, and prosthetics, but their potential uh, for autonomous grasping is uh, still largely unexplored because um, there are no uh, well-recognized control strategies for, the, for this kind of hands. So basically, <clears throat> the grand challenges that I want to quickly consider in, in, in my talk uh, are related to the development of algorithm that can deal and exploit this embodied intelligence of the hands, and also uh, to, to find some strategies for grasping failure prediction. Starting from the first point, of course, when we consider soft hands, we cannot use uh, classical object-centric approaches that uh, uh, are classical for rigid hands, where we have to uh, define uh, some content point position, uh, a set of available contact point uh, and, and their position, and then uh, the evaluation of the contact forces. And uh, these solutions are very elegant, but cannot uh, uh, be uh, applied to soft compliant hands because of their intrinsic uh, uh, nature of uh, uh, adaptation with respect to the external world. And also, when we look at uh, strategies for grasping failure prediction, uh, classical methods rely on th the usage of dedicated force sensors, but using uh, uh, effective force sensing is uh, hard with the softness constraints of the soft hands architecture. 
Indeed, uh, for tactile sensing of these soft hands, uh, uh, other solutions have been proposed, such, uh, for example, IMU based or acoustic sensing, and then the exploitation of machine learning to extract uh, uh, touch and force related information. So to tackle these two uh, challenges, uh, uh, I would like to propose a distributed intelligence approach where the intelligence uh, is not only in the computation, but also in the mechanics of the hand. Uh, and to do this, uh, uh, an important source of inspiration is of course the human example. Our body has an intrinsic uh, uh, mechanical intelligence and then a powerful computational tool to exploit it. So uh, this is the idea of the distributed intelligence. Uh, as you can see, there is a low level where, and uh, a medium level and a high level. To endorse soft hands with autonomous grasping, I want to exploit this distributed architecture. And in the high level part, uh, uh, the idea is to use a deep neural network to predict with a high accuracy the strategy that a human would perform to grasp an object from a table using a first per person RGB image of the scene. Then, a set of human-inspired low-level strategies that implement both uh, the approaching phase and the sensor-triggered reaction, and then the embodied mechanical intelligence of the soft hand. And here, quickly, the, uh, I will show, uh, we can see the, the main architecture that uh, I would like to discuss about. So basically, uh, uh, from the welcome, uh, we can uh, um, acquire information about the object on the scene and using a deep classifier, we can associate to this information the primitive that humans uh, most likely would perform to grasp it. And, and then when the, the hand uh, uh, contacts the object, uh, uh, there is a, a reactive actions triggered by INU information. And of course, uh, the compliance of the hand can help to overcome local uncertainties. So basically, to start from the high level part, uh, we recorded uh, a data set with uh, first person videos of uh, uh, persons grasping objects uh, from uh, tables, and we extract and label a series of uh, primitives. This is the structure of the deep classifier. So from an RGB frame as input, uh, we uh, extract the label and bounding boxes of uh, the object. But of course, uh, it's not a one-to-one -one signature, but uh, we only get a semantic description of the object. And then we associated to this description, the motion primitive that uh, humans would uh, perform to grasp it. I will skip the details, but uh, we uh, obtain a good uh, average accuracy to classify and associate the correct primitives to the object uh, uh, around 95%. Then once the uh, primitive was uh, identified, we try to implement it. And to do this, uh, we relied on the observation that the central nervous system uh, mainly act in a feed-forward manner. And then there are peripheral sensory events that uh, triggers some reactions. So, uh, in, in this case, what we did, uh, uh, this was the architecture that we use with a, a KUKA lightweight robot, the PCIT soft hand, which is a soft articulated hand with the IMUs mounted on the, on the nails. And uh, we uh, designed the trajectory that uh, controlled the pose of the hand in time in order to replicate the human motion primitives. And then when the, the hand uh, contacted the object, uh, we implemented also a reactive action so triggered by the sensory information provided by the, by the IMUs, because for the intrinsic adaptability of the soft hands, a rough approximation of the object and the hand pose is enough to produce successful grasps. So to identify the reactive components, we perform experiments where the human controls the soft hand with a handle and a lever to grasp an object from a table, a tennis ball, from different direction. And we recorded the IMU accelerations from the IMU sensors in the fingernails 
and we correlated this information with the, the rearrangement of the response of the human. Then uh, what uh, we did for the implementation uh, from the IMU signals recorded uh, uh, from the soft end performing uh, uh, different grasping of different actions, we found uh, the most correlated response that could uh, successfully lead to the grasping of the objects. To do this, uh, we identify some uh, reaction primitives. Uh, this is a trade-off because we identify primitives considering only in the mainly in the contact at the distal phalanxes. And uh, first, uh, we tested uh, these uh, reaction primitives in a handover task, where different objects were passed to the human robot to the robot hand from different directions and a different hand location, different from the ones that we consider for the generation of the set of primitives during the acquisition phase. And we get 86% of successful grasp. Then we uh, integrated everything. So the approach primitive uh, based on the human example, the IMU sensing uh, reactive primitives and the hand compliance. And uh, these are some of the results. Uh, here are some uh, pinch primitives that we consider I would like to show this because the hand that we use is able to do only power grasp, but thanks to its adaptability, it can also execute pinch grasp by using the environment. And here are some other primitives that we were able to successfully implement in our system. And as you can see, especially for the slide primitive, is very close to what a human tend to do, tends to do to grasp uh, a, an object uh, which is very flat. Then we extensively tested this architecture with many objects uh, different from the one that we used for uh, the training phase, uh, achieving uh, a, a 81, more than 81% of successful grasp. The second problem is to find the suitable strategies for grasping failure prediction. Because of course, it may happen that uh, the soft end can grasp an object, but uh, uh, the object can fail, can fall from the hand. And then we have to implement a, correct, a corrective action uh, to prevent uh, this uh, failure. Again, we use uh, a distributed architecture to develop a hand-to-hand -hand mapping from raw sensor data to detection and prediction of the failure event. We uh, rely still on the compliance of the soft hands. We consider in this work both soft articulated and soft continuum hand to exploit the vibration induced by objects sliding transfer to the fingers. Then at the medium level, we use a IMU based sensing globe to record such vibrations. And finally, a high level computation, we use a, a, a high level intelligence that predicts the object sliding by looking at IMUs reading. This is the overall architecture. So from the IMUs, we consider as a, a reliable source of contact information, accelerations and angular velocity. Then we apply a deep neural network capable to uh, both a posteriori and online detect uh, the failure events. This is uh, the GLOW, where we use uh, 16 IMUs. And as you can see, the GLOW is deformable and can be applied to both a soft articulated hand like the PCIT soft hand, but also a soft continuum hand like the RBO hand. And uh, um, this is the, 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 the data that we collected for, um, and, uh, for the um, analysis of the IMU profiles, basically the accelerations and the angular velocity. And uh, we use uh, this data uh, with a deep neural network to predict at each temporal step the success or failing of the grasp, even the current sensor readings. And uh, here you can see the deep uh, uh, neural net network that uh, was used to, for the prediction. This is the experimental setup that we employed to validate our approach. Basically, we consider some uh, objects with L-shape, pyramid, and cylinder, uh, both smooth and rough objects. 
and uh, we tested the performance of our predictor. And uh, in our predictor uh, pro, uh, has an accuracy of uh, 85, 86% with the soft articulated hand and 94% uh, in the RBO data set that uh, we um, acquired for the soft continuum hand. And uh, it is also important uh, to underline that uh, the network is good in not reproducing false positive because the accuracy uh, tested in success example is uh, approximately 84%, despite being training only on failure examples. And this is an important part because we can predict failure event with an average anticipation of uh, 1.96 seconds. So we have time to uh, implement a, correct, a corrective actions. We preliminarily tested uh, this approach also with uh, um, objects of common use, both the rigid and the partially deformable surfaces. And the, here you can see an example. Uh, you can see that uh, here there is no uh, uh, sliding and then the, there is the prediction uh, of an ongoing sliding of the object based on the uh, information of the IMUs. So, there is time to implement a, correct, a corrective actions uh, uh, to prevent this failure. So in conclusions, <clears throat> uh, the, the take home message of, of, of this talk is that considering soft hands, we have to consider a distributed intelligence approach. We have to take into account both the brain and the body, uh, the brain and habits. And this uh, um, brain and body uh, uh, approach is more than the sum of the parts. So mechanics and computation should go in a synergistic way. Of course, human inspiration is very important uh, uh, to uh, know how to exploit the softness uh, to get uh, very good grasping and manipulation capabilities. And the one important point is, is that uh, we have to consider in the future also the role of the task, because in this case, it was only uh, grasping an object from the, from the table. But uh, if I have to use the object, I have to implement also a task-oriented approach for the grasping. And all these things, we believe, uh, that can lead uh, to uh, um, an, an effectiveness of the implementation and uh, a minimization of the resource usage, both uh, mechanical and computational, and also uh, to uh, generalization of this approach uh, to different uh, grasping scenarios. And uh, I would like to thank uh, all the co-authors uh, of this work. Uh, and uh, if you have any information, please, uh, you can 